really? You really want to hear me talk about this? Okay, well, if we can get through this video without my tongue being tangled around my brain, I'm going to talk a bit in basic terms about secondary supply. So all in all, 2019 has been a pretty good year for the fundamentals of uranium. That being said, the one disappointment, I don't know if it's really a disappointment, but the one thing I would have thought could have gone a bit better is that the rise in SWU, separative work units, hasn't exceeded the rise in UF6. Now, it's not, it hasn't been bad, the rise of, or the, the price change in SWU. It's just, it hasn't, it hasn't been as, as much as one would hope when looking at how it turned and how it was moving before. So I was optimistic uh, about SWU outpacing UF6 because that would mean that the um, optim optimal tail assay would have shifted and cut out some some effective supply of uranium. Now, here's the thing about secondary supply. I hate talking about it, really. I Every time I try and think about it, well, think about it in too much detail, I get a headache. So I'm going to keep this fairly simple. But it is an important part of the uranium thesis because secondary supply makes up a good chunk of the supply. Uh, most of it comes from is well is related to underfeeding but part of it also is uh from or accounted for in the mox mixed oxide fuel and this is recycling and it's 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 about six million pounds a year so the optimum or optimal tails assay is a who I would just call it the one point in your life where calculus might be fairly useful, but it's a detail that's important to have a general idea about. I'm not going to go into too much detail because it gives me a headache every time I think about it, but it, it works basically like this. The OTA is a function of the SWU price and the UF6 price. As SWU goes, as the SWU price goes up, the OTA goes up. As UF6 goes up, the OTA goes down. But here's, here's the, the key. As the optimal tail assay goes up, uranium demand to make the fuel goes down. So I'm going to assume that I read that right and because it's technical and I would suggest going to Urenco and playing around with their calculator and it'll give you a better idea. But just to give you a basic idea, the optimal tails assay of about 0.25, that would mean underfeeding should be approximately zero. Now, the lower, lower than that, if the OTA is lower than that, underfeeding makes sense. If it's higher than that, overfeeding makes sense. Overfeeding um, is the reverse of underfeeding, which underfeeding I'm, I'm betting you've heard of, so I'm not going to go too much into that. And the last thing I want to say about these tiny numbers that mean very little, except that they mean a whole heck of a lot, is that the results aren't linear. So although this accounts for about 20, 20 25 million pounds at point oh or sorry, 0.16, it's not like a straight line. So it's not like that you take that, you divide it by 0.09, and you get an equal amount on each thing. It's, it's a parabola. And so if you really want to know about this, I suggest reading because I suggest that if you're able to figure it out and uh, read about it, you could find it far less confusing than if I were to talk about it. 
but basically the changes are not in a straight line. And the only other thing I'm going to say is that spare capacity also factors in because as demand grows for fuel, it's logical to think that the spare capacity might diminish and the chances are that the secondary supply would could diminish with diminished excess capacity. So this would lead to uh, less capacity to re-enrich the tails. And no, I'm not speaking some foreign language at this point, just you might have just wanted to skip this video if you don't want a headache. But anyway, the uh, re-enriching tails is turning depleted uranium into effectively natural uranium. So that's that. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you've made it to this point, I applaud you. Um, if you enjoyed, you might also enjoy the other episodes in this series, and they will be all out eventually, and probably some have been released already. As always, nothing I say is investment advice. This is all just what I'm seeing, how I'm thinking about the sector, and what I view as relevant. So with that, I will leave you there and have a great day.